What's up guys? I'm Crystal Lee Naomi, aka Jasmine Borders on Tyler Perry's Sisters. Be sure to subscribe to the Haves and the Have Nots review for not only reviews on the Haves and the Have Nots, but also on Sisters. And while you're at it, give your girl a follow on Instagram at Crystal Lee Naomi. And I'll see you every Wednesday at night, only on BET. All right, Sisters fans. Uh, yeah, this is really late, um, but I kind of waited on purpose to do this video at this time because tonight being the season one finale, uh, what better time to do the episode 24 review that aired two weeks ago on BET. <laughs> but yeah, guys, thanks so much for helping the trailer breakdown for the finale reach over 10,000 hits. So I appreciate that. And the episode of Bad Feeling was actually really, really good. Um, sadly, we start off the episode with a cop who made a bad call at the end of the last episode saying that Jasmine was murdered, but then it found... Oh, wait, he meant to say attempted murder, not murder. He's new to the force. Wow. And Gary's taken away. Sabrina is freaking out. And to say that Sabrina encapsulates the title of this episode is an understatement. A bad feeling. Because that's her whole stick the entire episode. But that's not to say I don't think she is not lovely. Because Andy and Sabrina do a lot of great acting during the first 10 minutes or so of the episode. Basically, Sabrina is trying to figure out exactly what's going on. She's sick of all these secrets that Andy and Karen basically hold from everyone else. But in this case, we actually find out as this scene progresses why Sabrina is so adamant to know what's going on. Basically turns out there was a guy from college who was an abuser and Andy stayed in that relationship for a long time but she says she's not like that anymore and I guess you could say that Moore shows up taunts Andy about how Gary's going to be away for a long time and she makes him back off due to the fact that there are allegations because there are at least seven women that she has found so far who have experienced Morris's advances in ways they were not comfortable with so what Morris did to Andy in the car outside of a, uh, what is it called, Freddy, Freddy P's? Andy is one of multiple women he has done that too. And Sabrina is just wanting to know what the heck is going on. Do you know Gary as well as you think you do? Come on, you gotta tell me what's going on here for the sake of your safety. So, Morris actually comes back right after Sabrina is about to leave because Andy's like, look, you need to know the entire situation. I want you to know that this is an accident because I know you're going to call the other girls, Danny and Karen, but let them know this was an accident. He did not hurt his wife. She fell from the top of a two-story garage on her back. Gary did nothing. And remember, Gary still hadn't even told the entire story to Andy. And then when Ben showed up, he made her tell the story, which again is stupid since she doesn't know everything. So then Morris comes back saying Jasmine wants to see Andy and she tells her about the fact that Gary's a manipulator. He puts you in isolation. He wants to keep you away from your family. He wants to keep you away from your friends. He wants to control the money, where you go, who you talk to, and what happened to me is going to happen to you. However, the thing that I'm more curious about is the fact that, wait, how did she get all those bruises on her face when she clearly fell on her back? And even when we saw her after Gary rushed down, her face wasn't as banged up as it was as she was in the hospital. Now you can make the argument, well, Jeremy, think of it this way. After she got to the hospital, she got cleaned up and then her face started to bruise. But when you saw her in the parking lot, the only time that Gary put his hands on her was when he backhanded her because she was beating him with the baseball bat. And the only other time he put his hands on her was after she had jumped on his back and he was trying to get her off. So no. All that stuff on her face. Some people have pointed to the fact, well, Jeremy, don't you kind of notice that Morris seems to have his fist, fist clenched when he was in the room with Jasmine and Andy? And then they also hold hands briefly. Could this be a staged up act? I don't know. Well, her falling on the car obviously wasn't. But in terms of her face, hmm, makes me really think that things are not what they appear to be. Uh, we actually have Sabrina watching through the little window in the door. Sabrina, man, she looks so gorgeous in this scene. Uh, and my boo Jasmine, you know, obviously is up to foul play because she wasn't telling a lie. She wasn't telling the truth. She was telling like a, what's it called? Like a, a half truth or whatever, where 
most of what she's saying is fact, but I still don't buy the whole beating because we know Gary did not beat her, resulting in her being in the hospital. So we go over to Sabrina and Andy in the hallway, and she talks about how I'm not like that anymore. And I already said, you know, what happened in the scene before because Sabrina doesn't want to be Andy to be in a situation like this again with Gary, uh, given the fact of what she went through in college. But here's my biggest takeaway from the scene. When Sabrina's trying to comfort Andy and Andy's like, don't touch me. And I'm like, oh, is she kind of having like PTSD? Remembering how she had her, um, that guy put hands on her in the past. So actually being in the hospital room with a victim of domestic violence with the man that she's with right now is bringing back flashbacks. Even though again, Morris is most likely the one that had her banged up rather than Jasmine getting it from Gary. Just my thoughts. So I think that Gary is more of an emotional abuser and manipulator than a physical one. I could be wrong, but based off everything we know of Gary so far, that's what I think. So again, this was a very, very, very great opening to the episode. Um, Sabrina's just trying to be there for Andy. And we kind of get why Andy is still with Gary because of the fact that she's went through something like this before in the past, at least with an abusive lover. And doesn't know how to get away from it because she's trapped in her feelings. Because even though she says she's not that kind of woman anymore, and we haven't seen Gary put hands on Andy, it's just the fact that this was definitely a situation where, oh, even though it's really dumb that Andy's still with Gary after all this stuff has happened, you can tell it's more of an emotional driven thing than her using her brain. Uh, Miss Lisa's talking with Zach. Uh, basically, her man Chris comes over. Another great scene. Uh, Zach is over there acting like Benny, like he doesn't know how to have a conversation and listen to someone who's actually trying to give him sound advice. But after hearing about Chris's past in regards to basically Chris was there as an example for Zach to see, regardless of your color, your gender, your past, your criminal record, if you work hard enough and have a clear vision you can make it. And it isn't even necessarily about becoming a millionaire or owning a big house or car. It's about not letting your past and who you were define who you become in the future. So this was a great scene to balance out all the other craziness in the episode. I was so pissed off where, you know, Zach was like, hey, well, I just want you to tell me about the million. I don't want to know about you and Miss Lisa, but tell me about this me. No, I got you. I was mad. Why are you going to go to commercial break? I want to find out. I got student loans, dang it. But this was a very great scene. Um, hope we see Chris in season two. Uh, then we go over to Karen and Aaron talking about how she's still kind of hung up on Zach. But the fact that she doesn't know exactly what to do. It's just that she doesn't see Zach being more than what he already is. And she can't motivate him. But the problem is there are some people who have had Karens in their lives. It could be their father, their mother a relative, a friend, a, a, um, a significant other, basically someone who does nothing but puts them down. There are some who will rise above that. It's like, I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah, you might be successful, but it's kind of empty because you only did it to prove someone else's negative thoughts and statements about you wrong. However, there are other people who are like Zach where, yeah, they have a vision or something or a plan, but when they get negativity so many times from a certain person, especially if it's somebody close to them, then it feels like they're being beat down. So it's been established several times already and said in this series, Karen really isn't one to up. She tends to bring people down more than she uplifts them. And I'm not saying that she's completely evil or anything, but that's actually true. There are people who speak, spew nothing but negativity it's like whenever you tell them about a dream or a concept it's like boy you ain't gonna do nothing you got a criminal record or boy if you really want to do something you wouldn't still be working at the airport or you would have a car you wouldn't have that bike and you would have you know you would help out on rent instead of this and that true true zach has his shortcomings but at the same time it's like he's giving up on himself so i could see karen's side of the story and she's not responsible as ms lisa said for making him into a man, but at the same time, Karen really hasn't done anything helpful to bring Zach up. True, Zach, what, aside from the down payment on their apartment together, he never helped on, on, out on rent, he cheated on her, but at the same time, when you look past that, and I'm not making excuses for Zach, don't think that at all, I'm just feeling like Karen really hasn't shown anything in the series so far that made it seem like she believes in Zach. 
That's all I'm saying on that. And then Aaron wants to have sex, but it's like, it's probably not the best time. I got to go to the wake for my, you know, dead ex-wife who killed herself in front of you. So, hmm, maybe another time. And then Sabrina rudely interrupts. I mean, yeah, she has a key and comes in, but okay. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. No, she didn't say that. She basically rushes Aaron off before they can even kiss. And it's like, okay, Sabrina, just because you are upset doesn't mean you have to ruin someone else's good night. And, um... Yeah, she's basically over there about the fact that, oh, I'm worried about Andy and the Gary situation. And Karen calls, no answer. She leaves a voicemail, text her or whatever. Um, you know, and once again, Sabrina's going off about how they're keeping secrets. And even Karen doesn't know exactly what's going on in this situation. And I don't know why, but Sabrina's like, you know what we had to do in order to get rid of that asshole from college who was Andy's abuser? Uh, Sabrina, what exactly did you do? So... Yeah, who knows? So after that, we go over to a cop escorting Andy into the uh, like interrogation or visitation room with Gary. Um, and basically, everybody in the department knows who Andy is because when she walked in, she's like, hey, how come everybody knew who I was, knew I re was representing? And apparently there was something that was emailed to everyone in the office that was a picture of Andy and Gary kissing. And I think the caption was, uh, this is the woman who my husband got with after he beat me. Interesting. And I think he even tried to, you know, hey, here's my number. And Andy promptly ripped it up because basically he was probably under the impression she was easy and a floozy. So Gary comes in um, and Andy asked about the whole situation about her face being bruised up black and blue. Gary is like, wait, 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 wait. Are you, you, you don't know me. You, you don't think you could trust me. You think I would do that to her, huh? Huh? And then... After he tries to make his case as to why Gary should be trusted by Andy, and yes, I said Gary in the third person, he actually reveals that he lied about having a legal friend that can help him get out of jail after he pretty much was an asshole to Ben. And Andy's like, well, I told you this isn't my expertise. Ben is the one who needs to help you get out of here. So he lets it go. And then it's like, hey, my account, my financial guide, I need to move some money in order to hide it from Jasmine's lawyer. So basically, Andy steps out and makes the phone call. I believe Leslie calls her at one point to say, come to the bar so we can talk. And then also she gets a phone call from John, the financial guide. And something to really keep yourself interested in because one of the biggest talking points of the episode was Andy is stupid for giving out her account number like that. When John said, and you're okay with this, it made it sound like, okay, Gary probably didn't tell... Andy why the money needed to be moved this sounds like a setup so after Zane's like yeah I could email you the um account number she's like oh yeah yeah oh okay that's great well I will keep an eye out for the email and as soon as I get it I will wire you the money something is foul here so then after that uh they meet up at the bar uh Leslie is there with Nikki the one the fan Fantina Fantasia um, Andy's secretary, the one who met up with uh, Leslie a couple episodes ago. Hey, I got a friend named Nikki. You can meet up with her, have a good time. So this is a lot of stuff to really talk about here. But before we get to that, let me just say what happens at the end of the episode. Fawn's brother, I believe his name is Bean, who Fawn's mother told Karen would come to see her, um, is there with a knife and it's like, you killed my sister. And then she is chased into the back room by Fawn's brother. And I mention that now because, yes, that's a cliffhanger, but Leslie drops a lot of info. Morris and Jasmine have had an affair for at least a year. He's actually having some financial trouble and could barely pay Leslie for her services as a PI. And then she eventually got fired by Jasmine. And Jasmine actually wants to get out of her marriage with Gary, but Gary makes an insane amount of money. So they were actually looking for any dirt on him possible in order to get out of this relationship. And remember, no prenup was signed. So really, Andy, a lawyer, was the perfect scapegoat for their plan. Morris came up with the idea to sue Andy's law firm, and her boss, Bellamy, is in it as well due to debt. And he doesn't have to pay a malpractice insurance claim. And the only reason Leslie is giving all this intel to Andy is because one, Morris owes her all that money, and two, Nikki, the girl she was hooked up with, is, you know, she got the hookup on there. So it's a twofer. It's like, I, hey, I got my back scratched twice, and I want to throw you a little, you know, 
what's your beat with this information so you can bring them down because you were in way over your head without even knowing it because this is more than just simply an affair you have been railroaded so um andy's like i'm never going to hire you and think thanks her for the information and leaves even though leslie has definitely proven to be effective so all that's to say andy is in for quite the trip now remember i could be wrong but i don't think leslie is aware about the wire transfer i think she'll find out in the next episode but i don't know i feel like that transfer of the money is something that's way too coincidental for it to not actually make sense in terms of a bigger uh, scheme. Because remember, this is the season finale and we need to set things up for season two. So with that being said, this was a great episode. I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. I enjoyed it from start to finish. Uh, yeah, no Danny, no Calvin, um, no Maurice. But I feel like this episode had a good flow to it. If there was anything I felt was a bit, really, it was just Sabrina's character for the episode. At the beginning of the episode, her being, and I'm not even going to say nagging, but being rightfully concerned for her friend because she's in way over her head. But then when it came to her just rudely barging into Karen's place and her date with Aunt Aaron, I felt that was, well, really rude. And... I mean, yeah, the title of the episode is A Bad Feeling, and Sabrina feels some type of way about what Andy's gotten into, but don't you remember Calvin, the guy who's sobering up and sleeping over at your apartment, and he wanted to put hands on your ass when he was drunk? So, not really sure how, you know, the pot's calling the kettle black in this situation, but yeah, Sabrina at times was like the most annoying part of the episode, but then at other times, basically when she was with Andy... It's justifiable. But when she was over at Karen's house, that was like, yeah, that that seemed a bit random to me. But other than that, the episode was pretty solid. Seems like, you know, Gary's like, hey, you don't know me. No, we don't know you. There's still so much we don't know. And I feel like what Jasmine was saying was true, except for, you know, him actually bruising her face. But all that's to say, I only got one more episode review to do, and we're done with season one of Sisters. Let me know how you thought, uh, enjoyed the series so far. What were some of your favorite bits from the episode? You probably might want to watch the recap um, tonight, you know, when they replay the episode. But wait, do they even do that? If they play um, the last episode, I would definitely recommend watching it because I rewatched the episode this morning and I'm like, wow, it feels like the episode has been gone for a while when it's only been two weeks. But overall, this is one of the best episodes of the season and I can't wait for the finale. So shout out to the patrons over on Patreon. Also, follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Uh, you can join the Patreon family for as little as $2 a month. You can support the channel through PayPal or Cash App. You can support the channel for free by hitting subscribe, hitting the thumbs up button, and or, if you haven't done it already, hit the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out on any new content I post to the channel. And with that being said, I'll talk to you on the next video.